means that there is a cylinder seal about 4,000 years old showing this goddess, her name was Ninmah, raising the newborn model, model men, Lulu Amelu, as they called it, and she shouted, and these are words in those texts, my hands have made it. Uh, and uh, that is, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, how we came about. This is the long <laughs> story, which I gave you as briefly as I could, uh, of what the Bible says in uh, chapters 2 and others of Genesis, that a group called the Elohim, which is a plural term, uh, literally meaning the lofty ones, translated God, uh, said to each other, let us, in the plural, let us fashion the Adam. Adam comes from Adama, which is earth, so Adam, literally earthling. Let us fashion the earthling in our image and after our likeness. And this is essentially in one uh, biblical verse <laughs> what the Sumerian tales tell <coughs> in uh, quite, uh, <coughs> quite a number of uh, cre <coughs> creation texts. <laughs> and then after they achieved that and uh, everything seemed to be in order, the deluge came and destroyed everything. So after the deluge, the Ananites, that tells, by the way, some variant tells describing the deluge and its reasons and its, uh, what caused it and, uh, and, and, and why was one God angry and said, let mankind perish, etc., etc. But that's uh, <laughs> another, it's another evening. <laughs> so uh, after the uh, deluge, when the water subsided, uh, they had to restructure and recreate and restart everything uh, from the beginning. And uh, they could not do it anymore in, uh, uh, in the Edin, uh, today's uh, Mesopotamia or Iraq, because it was all covered with uh, millions, or now one should say billions, uh, of, uh, of <laughs> tons of mud. Uh, and then nothing could be done there until uh, the earth would, <coughs> would take uh, uh, generations and generations to dry. <coughs> so they shifted uh, the whole project from where it was. If you recall, it was this way. All, everything was anchored on Mount Ararat, the twin peaks of Ararat, which stand out as, as a marker, <coughs> and laid out exactly the same idea of a landing corridor, <coughs> Uh, this way. Now they used uh, as one of the facilities uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to serve their purposes a great platform that they had built here and that survived the deluge, spaceport, which was here uh, and here, uh, to uh, create the whole landing pattern. Uh, they uh, chose a new Mission Control Center, a new place for the Durham Key, right here. And uh, this place is known today as Jerusalem. Uh, either at, at seminars or when, when I took groups with me to tour these places, uh, I would say uh, to them, uh, why, why is Jerusalem sacred? I so, said, well, uh, it is sacred to, uh, to Muslims because the tale is that uh, Muhammad was taken from Mecca or Medina uh, one night on a winged horse and brought to, where, to Jerusalem, and there he was taken aloft and visited heaven for one night. So that's... Uh, <coughs> but why was Muhammad taken to, to Jerusalem? Why wasn't he lifted just from Mecca or Medina? Well, because that place was already known as a sacred place because the Christians believed that that's where Jesus 
uh, preached and was crucified, etc. So I said, so why was uh, Jesus uh, crucified in Jerusalem? Uh, he was born in, in Bethlehem. He came from Nazareth. Why, why Jerusalem? Oh, well, because that's where the temple was, the Jewish temple, the temple of Solomon. So why was the temple of Solomon there? Well, <laughs> people don't know. Uh, so I tell them, well, it was there because the same Anunnaki who had uh, this pattern and had Nippur as the navel of the earth and mission control center before the deluge set up this layout and made Jerusalem mission control center after the deluge. And equidistant from it is the spaceport and uh, a, a Twin Peaks emulating the Twin Peaks of Ararat. Twin Peaks are here in the Sinai Peninsula and Twin Peaks artificial ones because there were no mountains there. So they built two mountains known as the Giza Pyramids. Now, Things did not go so well after the reconstruction and the setting up of the uh, alternate uh, mission control center. <laughs> the Anunnaki, uh, uh, who, uh, according to the tales by Enki and others, uh, were engaged in, in almost constant wars on their planet, uh, had at the time a leader called Anu, but uh, he was actually a usurper. He usurped the throne. And uh, uh, under the Sumerian sexagesimal six system of six times ten, sixty, etc., <laughs> he ranked as the top rank sixty. And uh, his successor was a son called Enlil, who was given the rank 50. But Enlil was not the firstborn son. Uh, it was Ea, or Enki, as previously known as Ea. Uh, Enki, who was really the uh, rightful successor, but he was demoted to rank f matching the 12 members of the solar system and matching other uh, 12 without belaboring it, uh, 12 months of the year, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples of Jesus, and, and so on. So 12 was a celestial number. So the relationships were such that the conflict was almost uh, inevitable, especially since it had a lot to do of who was mothered by whom, who was the father, who was the mother, uh, if this one uh, <coughs> was also uh, the son of, uh, of uh, Anu and Antu, then he was this rank, but if this one was only the son of this one, but not this uh, queen, he had another rank. So the relationship was quite uh, con confused and con convoluted and, and, and leading to, to conflict, which, which soon appeared on earth. And one of the uh, uh, events that uh, took place, not, not, not uh, uh, too many, uh, relatively, too many years after the establishment of that uh, great pattern of landing pattern in Jerusalem and the space force, etc., and the, the two artificial mountains in Egypt, <coughs> was that uh, uh, wars broke out. And the first war that I named in my book, uh, uh, The Wars of Gods and Men, <coughs> uh, the Pyramid Wars, because there was a series of them, had to do with, with, with these facilities, because in the Great Pyramid, one of the two especially, which is the only one that has an ascending passage and chambers, all the others have just a descending <coughs> passage. They uh, series of Pyramid Wars, uh, took place there. Uh, in that particular war, the two main protagonists 
where the main son of uh, Enlil, called Ninurta, and the main son of Enki, called Marduk. And uh, in that war, uh, it was Ninurta uh, who was the victor, and uh, his victory was commemorated in some cylinder seals and other depictions. Uh, this was his uh, symbol, uh, the, uh, the eagle, and this was his victory's uh, depiction, how, how he won the war over the two pyramids, and uh, another depiction where you see actually all three pyramids. And this, by the way, is another uh, uh, of the proofs of which I have many, and I deal with it uh, extensively of who built the pyramids and when they were built, and that you see that already in Sumerian times, which preceded the pharaonic times by uh, uh, thousands of years, uh, the existence of the pyramids was, was already known. Around uh, 2900 BC, a Sumerian king, now, <laughs> the whole business of immortality uh, doesn't really exist because all the tales tell us that these so-called gods, the Anunnaki, were both born and died. And there are tales about both births and, 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 and death. But it is all relative. That's why the Greeks call the, the, the gods, they borrow the Sumerian pantheon, they, they, they call them the immortals. But it was only a difference in, in what a year is. If the Anunnaki come from a planet whose orbit is about 3,600 of our years, to them it is one year. If you would ask an Anunnaki, how old are you? You'll say, whatever, I'm 20 years old, which means my planet, Nibiru, made 20 <laughs> rounds around the sun. Uh, if you ask uh, somebody here, so we won't ask people for their ages, of course, <laughs> but you ask how old are you, and he'll answer, it means my planet, where I grew up, to which I genetically belong, made X number of orbits around the sun. That's a year. So, but anyway, Gilgamesh was the son of a goddess. And uh, he felt, he came to his mother, and he actually was not only a demigod, but he was two-thirds divine because his mother, not his father, his mother was a, a god, a goddess. And he said, if I'm two-thirds divine, two-thirds Anunnaki genetically, why should I die like a mortal? And she said to him, you're right. But in order to attain our longevity, you have to go and be on our planet. <clears throat> so he went in search of immortality, and the Epic of Gilgamesh is a well-known literary work uh, from antiquity, translated in antiquity already in, in many of those ancient languages. Now, where did Gilgamesh go uh, in search of immortality? He had to go to places from which he would be taken aloft to the planet of the gods. So if you remember this design, this is what I showed you. <laughs> this is Jerusalem, which is only mission control center. Uh, he had, and this one, this one, where is it? This one was destroyed in the pyramid wars. So he had two places to go. One was the great platform in the mountains here, and one was the spaceport itself. And so around 200, 2000, 2900 BC, almost 5,000 years ago, he went in search of a place to, to be taken aloft and join the gods on their planet. Now the one, the first one that I showed you, this one, uh, is uh, in the mountains of Lebanon. Uh, the great cedar forest there is depicted and described uh, in detail 
in the uh, epic tale of Gilgamesh. And uh, he, the, the text says that he witnessed on the night before he entered or tried to enter the place, he saw a rocket launched. And lo and behold, uh, archaeologists have discovered a Phoenician coin from a place not far from there uh, that shows the great platform uh, and, uh, and a rocket ship on a, on a podium. This and can be visited. I went there at, uh, at some risk. I would not advise you uh, to go at this time because it's the headquarter feet. And here at this northwestern corner, uh, there are ruins uh, of temples built over temples, over temples. The latest one are uh, Muslim and Byzantine and Roman, but they are built over, over, on or over a platform that pre-existed. And these are some of the most ancient uh, ruins that you see there uh, of uh, levels that keep rising from down there, rising and rising and rising and rising and rising. And these stone blocks weigh between 600 to 900 tons each. And uh, the, the immensity of the place is, is, is mind-boggling. Even more mind-boggling <coughs> is uh, one of the courses in the western wall of that uh, enclave, and the western wall on top of these huge boulders. Uh, and this, the three of them, one, two, and the third one, called known uh, as the triliton. <laughs> this is uh, the, Im the, the drawing, the image. This is a line drawing of a person, so you can see the scale. So there are three of these huge uh, stone blocks uh, lying in one of the courses, one of the levels next to each other. And they weigh 1,100 tons each. Now, there is no piece of equipment even today that can lift 1,100 1, tons or even 1,000 tons, or even 600 tons. There's no, no such uh, piece of equipment. Yet, and this is a photograph, by the way, uh, I think, can, can, can you see that, that uh, little ant there? That's me. I'm standing there. And this is one, the first triliton, and then there are two more. Now we know where they came from because about a mile and a half away there is the quarry from which those stone blocks were uh, uh, cut, cut and lifted and brought and one of the, them is unfinished. So right here it's still part, part of, the, of the native rock and this part has been already cut and, uh, and again this is me there. So you can see the size. So somebody in antiquity, and according to all the evidence before the flood, before the flood, <coughs> uh, cut those stones and uh, lifted them uh, over a mile and a half and put them there, not on, drop them on the ground, but put them exactly where they should be, <coughs> where, where they belong. And the question is, what, what was the purpose of this whole thing? As I said, Gilgamesh uh, reported that he saw a rocket ship uh, launch there, and the Phoenician coin also depicted. And uh, it was only after I saw photographs of uh, about a year ago, I think, of the Chinese launching their spacecraft for the first time, now, we are used to uh, uh, launch towers made, uh, made of metal and so on, uh, but, but this is also built out of uh, some kind of stone. So I uh, have no doubt that what we see there
Now, where's the wire? 